Hey gang, we are in Sacramento, California today. Beautiful morning, a very old cemetery, Sacramento City Cemetery. This is more like the Midwest, Chicago, or out east. We're talking a lot of old, amazing stones and sculptures here. Well, we're gonna walk to the grave today of a young girl. She was 13 years old. She lived in the late 1800s. And there's a mystical aspect to the story that relates to maybe beyond the grave. So let's walk to her grave and I'll tell you the story of May Woolsey. It's a very interesting story. It is the story of a Sacramento family. Sacramento story, famous story. So May was born on November 12th, 1866 here in Sacramento. Her father was Luther S. Woolsey and her mother Mary Esther Cogswell Woolsey. Now Luther was a pattern maker for much of his professional life, but eventually he would change his career and he'd become a machinist with Sacramento Ironworks here. But the family, they became very well known. They were esteemed within Sacramento. And they were even acquaintances with some of the very prestigious elite families, families like the Crockers. So, a little bit about May. May was a very bright young girl, very promising future. But very sadly, as with many kids, many people in those days with the diseases, she fell ill September of 1879. She spent many days in bed. She's not getting better. They thought it might have been aggravated initially from a mosquito bite, but it could have been the measles. And no cure in the day, there was no penicillin yet, of course, not until the 1900s, so her illness led to other complications, and it led to encephalitis. It was September 21st, 1879, just a few months before her 13th birthday and she passed away and the family of course was absolutely devastated mother mary was inconsolable now as they did and we've talked about this in those days the family invited the family and friends over to the house. The house was at 916 East Street for the traditional parlor viewing and then the funeral. And then she was buried here, here at the Sacramento City Cemetery. Well, Mother Mary of course, as many mothers would do, took the all of May's belongings and keepsakes and she gathered them up and she put them in a, a big trunk. And the trunk went in storage. And the family tried to move on. They moved to a, a, another house. And May's mother, Mary, really tried to find May through spiritualists in the afterlife. And spiritualism, we talked about, that was a big thing back in the late 1800s, 19, early 1900s. We talked the story about Houdini, who was debunking Mia Crandon, Marjorie, and all these spiritualists. And many of them in those days were con artists. Now, there were and are I believe some gifted people, few and far between, 
But what's interesting is that in the 1970s, there was a guy named Ed Duffy who bought the house. Now we're going, what, way more than a hundred years later. And he's renovating and he opens up this false wall. And behind the false wall, he finds a trunk. And that was the trunk that Mary had put together and apparently it was hidden. Hidden in the wall. It was a tremendous find. It was unbelievable. There were so many things in the trunk it was it was hard to even it was hard to even imagine. It was just a complete time capsule. Everything from letters and keepsakes and jewelry and things. Just imagine. Now what's really interesting is that the trunk is right now in the Sacramento History Museum. We're going to get to go see it. It doesn't have all of the items. It has a lot of them on display. So we're going to go see that trunk. But what makes this story really, really incredible is that there was a letter found in the trunk that was a letter to Mary from May after her death. Now I'm told the letter was written, there is a letter, it was written by the spiritualists channeling May and writing it down. It's a long letter. And I'll read part of it. Now, Deb and I, Deb's my ancestry helper, when we were looking at the story, we were looking at, there is one picture online of the letter, and it's on like greenish stationery with, with colored lines. Thought, wow, eight, late 1800s. Did they, and we did confirm they did have stationery back there like that. So the spiritualists apparently wrote it. Thank you, Delta who is from the museum, she told me the inside scoop on that. Probably a lot of people here know that. The letter's at another location. I don't think we're going to be able to see it, but there is an image I'll show. So really, really interesting. Was it from May beyond the grave? Or was it something that the spiritualists just made up? I don't think we'll ever know. But what we do know is that May and Luther and Mary, who followed, are all buried together here, right over here, next to this, next to the Civil War monument area, the memory of the dead soldiers who I believe this area had a lot of Confederate Confederates. And maybe I'm wrong, but... but let's focus on May. And their little family plot is right over here. And they have a sign here. It tells a little bit about the story, I'm guessing. Oh, and there are some headstones. Look at this. I think those are for people that may have died later, but we'll see. Let's take a look here. So there's a picture of May, the portrait, 1876. And that, I think, is at the museum. We'll see if we can see the original of that. It actually looks like a porcelain on a granite. And maybe, maybe it, was, it was once here. And it says that May Woolsey was the beloved only daughter of Luther and Mary, who lived at 916 East, oh, it's not East Street, East Street. And it tells a story that she died of cephalitis. The trunk was rediscovered, new owners, and its contents helped tell the story of childhood and loss.
And here is her, here's her gravestone. And you can see people are putting all kinds of things here. The top money. It just says May H. Woolsey. Don't you love these old stones? The, the marble. It's so beautiful. Here's a larger granite monument for the mother and the father. So dad passed away later. Mom passed away in 1895. Luther passed away in 1914. I'm going to try and reverse the camera here and see if we can we'll take a quick look. I'm going to reach over. So these are other Viola. This is the Pollards. I'm guessing they are somehow related. Yeah. Well, there it is, folks. Quite a story. A beautiful young woman, daughter who was lost oh so early, as many. Okay, so let's go to the museum and let's have a look. And Wolsey's hopefully are resting in peace. Let's go. We are at the museum, and there is the trunk. And here to talk about it is Delta Picmello at the Sacramento History Museum. Correct. Thanks for, uh, Delta's been awesome giving me information. There's so much more to this than I thought. Look, look at that trunk. I mean, what a treasure trove. Why don't you yeah. tell us a little bit about it? So the trunk um, was discovered 100 years after her death right. in 1979. Right. The owners of the house were restoring the house. Found this Ed Duffy. Um, he found the trunk, and you can see the picture a little bit there. It was oh, kind of behind a wall and that's underneath the, hidden the wall. floor. Look yeah. At that. So um, it was filled with all kinds of items that we can only imagine that the parents of May Woolsey pa right. uh, packed up upon her death. There were letters, writings of May's, things from her schoolwork, photographs, um, uh, toys and dolls. Look and this at the is porcelain just, doll. Look yeah, at that. This is just a sampling. There was clothing, um, little boots there. Whoops. So this is just a sampling of some of the things. There were over okay. 500 different items in okay. there. From toys and games to just, you know, odds, bits and bobs. Right. And um, so what we do is the Center for Sacramento History stores the items. They are the archival location okay. for the city's collection and they will rotate different items through here. What we then added was, so we wanted everybody to know about this story because it's just wonderful for kids to um, uh, explore the idea of a time capsule. What would you save to, to have people remember you a hundred years from now? And to learn about the life of Victorian era children. Um, so this is, this is used in our school programs. Uh, we have a, a traveling facsimile trunk that we take to schools uh, to use in our school programs. Oh, nice. But we wanted to add this element over here to your right that gives um, everyone an experience. It gives a more accessible So experience. that's what this is. Yes, this is for um, visually impaired and um, it's in English and Spanish. But everybody can enjoy now hearing 
segments of her diary being read. Oops, I that's okay. That. <laughs> that's great. Um, hearing stories about elements like her hair was very long and beautiful. So when you touch this center, this sensor, it talks about how long her and curly her curly hair was. It was it's an extraordinary um, hair for that time, and they would wear yes. it all up. And children, young girls, would wear it down. And as she came of age, if she had come of age, she would have worn it up. And then the trunk itself, they were fascinated by all the, the um, belts and buckles. So this is a facsimile of the trunk that you right. can feel. It's tactile. Oh, yeah. And so you can get a sense of all the different um, you know, components of it. An example of a doll, an example of one of her readers, the uh, McGuffey's, a classic McGuffey's um, third eclectic reader. And um, and this fan, a feather fan that she talks about uh, going to a birthday party in one of her, in her diary. diary. Yes, yeah. and her mother had bought her a new outfit, and um, she was going to pick out what jewelry she was going to wear. Can I uh, step up and just get a close up of those pictures? You can. Okay, I'll try to be careful. So, is this Luther, her we, father? We don't know for sure. We can only make assumptions. Okay. Um, the, she did have an older brother, so we so assume that that is her older brother and her mother and yeah. father, but we don't have anything that identifies them exactly um, to be those people. So so this is Mary. This is uh, May's mother, we're assuming. Yeah, Mary. And uh, that's uh, May as a young child. That one was, I believe, identified. But... Oh, yeah. um, so yeah, we can only make assumptions on what we find. Yeah, and because this was a time capsule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, what's this here? And this is just something that we created to, oh, um, okay. to add to the ambiance of the, right. of the exhibit. So there's the original picture. She's probably 10 years old there. Yeah, but so. definitely younger. This is, this is the most recent. We're pretty sure this is the most recent yeah. picture of her. Okay, let's take a look. Now, is this part of the exhibit also? Well, in this part of the exhibit, we talk about the life of Victorian children. Okay. And her life um, as a young, um, middle class, middle to upper class, young girl, she had a very different life than perhaps the African American girl in, in the cart there, right. or the Mexican Americans that, and the Native Americans, and, and um, Japanese Americans, Chinese Americans, all of these people that lived may have had different experiences. So we talk about childhood in Victorian and um, early turn of the century times in Sacramento. That's fantastic. Well, back to the trunk. Mm -hmm. Let's, I want to. There was something else that caught my eye. Her little shoes. I'm going to come around <laughs> this way. Are yes. those her shoes? Yes. Yeah, and they're rubber shoes. So they were rubber. galoshes. Oh. I mean, there's. Even though this is just some of the items, look at the little, she keep her keepsakes in there. Yeah, and we assume that she decorated and made the little trinket box. Yeah. Um, the fact that she had an engineer's cap was really kind of fun. Interesting. Yeah. Now, what are those drawings? Uh, are so those her are, sketches? Yeah, these are sketches that she would have done in her class. Oh, and she was working on facial structure profile. So those are her drawings. Yeah, yeah. There was also a letter. Just like parents would, sorry to interrupt, oh, just yeah. like parents, like I keep from my of boys, course. I call the secret drawer all their grade school drawings and little exactly, projects. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. That's just some of the things, yeah, we've, we found in here. What about the diary? Is this the diary? So or the one diary of them? was not, we only got a certain pages. This is not, um, this is a book of hers, but it only had a few pages in it, which is kind of interesting. And I think about um, if I left my diary, there might be some things I didn't want in it. Uh, yes. You know, I, we're not really sure why we only got pieces and parts of it. Right. But um, again, we have to make some assumptions when we get artifacts. We, we take the, the knowledge that we have about the time right. and all of the information that we've gathered and then we have to make some kinds of assumptions. And I see there's a public school's diploma mm -hmm. for her. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Wow, this is just a treasure trove. Now, let's talk about the letter. The letter. The letter from the... You, and this is... It's really cool because uh, you told me that... Uh, Delta told me that 
the letter was actually written by spiritualists, and we know that Mary, upon May's death, went that route and wanted to connect and channel to her beyond. So the letter does exist, but it was written by the spiritualists, yes. channeling, yes. supposedly. Yes, exactly. Now, in Victorian times, spiritualism was very popular. Yes. And to reach out beyond, you know, how much you, if somebody promised you or, you know, convinced oh, you that yeah. they could reach out to your loved one. This was her only child, her only daughter. Yeah, she's vulnerable. Me. And yeah, very vulnerable. So we, there was a document that was written by the spiritualists that had a lot of a lot of uh, you know, a lot of interesting kind of flowery, stuff, flowery maybe. sort of stuff, yeah. and then supposedly had a portion of it that was a letter from May telling her mother that she was fine, she was in a better place, and she was right. You know, she um, was okay. And while we're standing here, and I I was going to read it at the cemetery, but I forgot. But I'll, I'll read to you from my notes. There was a oh, let's see, I have to edit. Get to this. Um, oh, here. It said, and this is just a part of the note that said, Dear Mama, I am so happy as I did write to you and say I was happy. Now, Mama, dear, do not weep for me. I am not dead. No, only gone before to wait your coming when you will be all out of sorrow and care, will be happy with me. Oh, what pleasure there is in the spirit life. No one can tell. Only think of everlasting life and pleasure where we know no sorrow, all the sunshine. There is no cloud to darken our path as on earth. We have our choice of mission. Yeah. I thought that was, you know, 13 year old girl, I mean, beyond. Mm -hmm. Is she writing that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> leaning to, I, I hate to be the this, this debunker, right? But yeah. I mean, we talked about uh, Marjorie. Mia Crandon, Houdini going and busting all the mm -hmm. spiritualists. We did an episode on her in Boston, and right down the line, they were all trick artists. Now, there are some gifted. We don't want to discount that, but yeah. what, I mean, right? It's, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and if it gave her mother some peace, then, yes. then you know, there's no harm. Yeah. Um, so, except for perhaps how much money she may have spent on it. Yeah. But, that's another, <laughs> that's another yeah. sidebar. But yeah. this was something that um, she, I, she, th this is another part of the story that multiple generations can, can relate to. Children right. can relate to the, what would I save in the time capsule? What, you know, what was the, her life yeah. like? What's my life like? But parents can relate to the grief of losing a child totally. so young. And it's yeah. interesting, one of the most interesting aspects is she died of encephalitis, right. which um, we know today to be encephalitis. It was probably caused by a mosquito bite. Right. And one of her last entries in her journey journal that summer was how the mosquitoes were very bad that Interesting, year. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, so we... So it is again, that, not so the measles, made, it was probably that. It was, it was encephalitis, it okay. was what it was that determined was, to be. And so okay. we make assumptions again yeah. that it was a mosquito bite possibly and, and not uncommon in um, that time. Interesting. Well, thank you very much, Delta. Wow, what a treasure trove here. And thanks for letting us come and see all this. this oh, of this course, is just, of course. Uh, yes, fascinating her story, her story time capsule. Is, her story is quintessentially Sacramento. So when you come to Sacramento, this is not a story. This story, May Woolsey, is ours here in Sacramento. It's what makes us unique. All right, gang. See you on the next one. And thanks, Delta. Certainly.